All right, what we have today is a, a 10-year-old Goodman here. Haven't looked exactly. Probably a 10-seer. Matched up with an old GE electric furnace. And we have a high superheat, but it was falling rapidly because I noticed the indoor blower shut off while it was starting to operate. So we're going to see what exactly is going on. Looks, looks like we might have two things wrong with it. So we're going to check that out. All right, this is our indoor unit. It's a GE Weathertron electric furnace. From, uh, from what I can tell from the serial number, I think it's 1982. So it's an old boy. And it's matched up with that good one outside. There's our heat strips. Our relay boxes there. You can check out some of the uh, old style relays down there. There's the main entry there. We have our, you can tell from the blade puller there, we have a bad evaporator motor. Uh, they're rated at 1.7 amps. They probably should run it around 1.2, 1.3. And this one's running at 5. Uh, it runs for a minute or two, then shuts off, and it's, we'll just say it's a little warm. So I'm getting a blade puller, and I'm going to pull this uh, scroll cage off. What have you put the blade puller down there, you tighten up these screws. On uh, condenser fans, there's little hooks you can hook on there, but this doesn't work for evaporator fans because you have that big disc in the middle. Uh, tighten the screws down, and we tighten down this main screw, and it pulls it off, or pushes the motor out the other side, in this case. So that's what we're going to do first, and then we're going to see if I have a motor. Uh, that'll match up with this one. It's kind of a, it's an ancient boy, so we'll see what we got. Alright, there's my replacement motor, my multi-horse. Hopefully it'll, uh, end up jamming in there quite nicely. We'll see for sure in a second. Uh, but another thing I want to do, you can see down in there on the scroll cage, there's a lot of dust. And uh, every time you get build up of dust on fan blades, it decreases the amount of CFM they can push. Because their shape is by design. And if it alters that shape, they go out of balance, it decreases the efficiency. So since we're opening it up, let's go ahead and clean it out. It hasn't been cleaned out probably in, oh, 20 years or so. So it's due. And this plate here, which is in front of the blower, screws off here on the sides. We take that out. So we can remove the scroll cage, which is easier to do with two hands. There it is. So we'll take that outside and uh, brush it off and stuff. Get it back in as close to balance as it can be with the uh, pieces of it that have rusted away over the years. All right, I put our Wagner motor in a bracket. Added these little fins to the bracket, basically whatever height you want. Screw them into lower housing. It sandwiches it in there. These are reversing leads. You change it either clockwise or counterclockwise depending on what you want. You have a ground wire. And I believe you have, let's see, one, two, three, four speeds. Red, black, yellow, and blue. I don't remember which one's which. I know blue is medium high because that's the one I'm using this time. And I believe black is usually high speed. Uh, two brown wires, we'll go to the capacitor, and a white which is the common which goes to your other side of power from your speed tap. So we're going to go ahead and slide it in there uh, after I hook the squirrel cage onto it and bolt it on there and then we are going to wire it up. Right, I figured we'd take a look at our diagram here and as you see the motor we just put in is a Wagner motor. It's just one of the multi horsepower motors made by lots of different people. In fact, you can see some of the matchups here. A.O. Smith, Fasco, Emerson, Marathon, Gemline, Smart, GE. All these people make multi-horse motors. So you can carry them on your van. If you run into different situations, you're always prepared. You don't have to keep one of every horsepower, which would be impossible. Uh, you can see our white wire there at the top. It's part of our 240 volts. And uh, it's the common. And the bottom there, you see where it says line on the left side. The top is white. The bottom, you choose what speed you want. Uh, black high, blue medium high, yellow medium low, red low. And it'll advise you based on what horsepower motor you're replacing, what speed you want to choose. I'm replacing quarter horse, so I am going with blue medium high. Uh, the yellow and green ground wire on the right side will be attached to anywhere on the housing. Where I attached it to is where the capacitor is going to be right there. Uh, so it's on the uh, blower housing. And the very bottom, you see the direction wiring diagram. You see clockwise and counterclockwise, a CW and CCW. Uh, there is a plug, and basically what you do is uh, you find the rotation you want by taking that plug, which is, let's see, 
right here and it plugs together and if the rotation is wrong you just unplug it and flip it around basically turn the plug around and plug it in reverse and it'll be uh, right there so that's how that is so now what I'm going to do is track down which one was the speed tap over here and which one was the uh, common tap and we'll be about done alright here's our Weathertron electric furnace now it's out of the blowers and it. it's running now she's rocking and rolling holding on for dear life all those old rusty parts so uh, we'll be lasting for at least a little bit longer um, there it goes so look at it uh, of course GE Weathertron GE is a name you might be familiar with if you saw the units because it became train that same design Remember train weather trying to see little boxy things from the 19, late 1980s and early 90s. Uh, I see a lot of those still out there, good units. So this is from that same area, same area maybe a little bit before, but uh, this was the electric furnace. All right, we're back outside. I got the Philip piece uh, charging the superheat. Gauges here. Of course, the gauge is a little high because I'm putting refrigerant into the system right now. Got about eight ounces. I'm gonna let it off in a second. See how we're going. There's my little setup there. A little T fitting. I have one going to the refrigerant, one going to the field piece. So I can cut out the refrigerant and monitor the system pressure once I'm done, which I'll do now. Like so. Cut the refrigerant off going in there. Adjust back down to the actual reading. Gives me a superheat. We're looking for something around 15. We started off in the 40 something, so. You can see what we're dealing with, probably another half a pound or so, and get us down into range. But we'll let it settle out, maybe it'll settle down a little bit farther. Here's a little tip for other service techs they run into a problem. I changed out this blower, and the system is about 30 years old. So everything's rusted, the old mounting brackets, not what it once was. So I had a little vibration, there's still a little vibration. Here's something rattling up here. But I had a large doo -doo 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 vibration. I was like, what's going on? So I tried to brace the furnace a little bit better, see if anything was hitting up against the inside of this cabinet wall here, on the other side, because the furnace is right on the other side of that wall. And I went into the refrigerator, and it was a thing of spread, like a butter type spread, hitting the back of the refrigerator. So you never know, little vibrations can make it sound like there's a horrible problem, but it was actually just something in the fridge that was bouncing around. So just because the fridge is right next to this furnace cabinet, and this furnace is so old, it shakes a little bit when it turns on. That's wild, but lesson learned. Do a little bit of snooping around, sometimes you find the problem. As for our temperature, we're looking at about 59 degrees. Coming out, our room temperature is around about 76. That's not bad. 16 degrees delta T, roughly speaking, without taking the measurements out of the unit. But of course, we have our old General Electric stat, which came right along with it. But I've seen a lot of these bad boys over the years. Weathertron. Well, that's about it for this one. I'm going to go down the street to the next one, replacing some ductwork. The less glamorous part of my job.